So this tip is about placement, and that's the other really, I mean, probably the most important thing, in, um, I think, in playing the harp. And this is coming from a pianist for many, many, many years. Um, I kind of do the same thing. If you're a pianist, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, is that you kind of form the chord in your hand ahead of time. And as it's coming down on the piano, it's already starting, you know, it's a four-note chord. Your hand looks like this, or maybe like that, or maybe like this. Um, different finger spacings and different finger combinations going down. So that definitely applies to the harp. Um, here's what most people do, including me, <laughs> when I first started, is to flail at it, you know, like this, to kind of swat it. And so therefore you're coming at the string from a distance and you're kind of giving it a, a pluck that way. And what you want to do, and this is very important, if you learn nothing else today, <laughs> is place and pluck. Place and pluck. So here's your finger, ready? You're going to place it and then you're going to pluck it. So touch the string, pull it off. So, and that works not just for one string at a time, but it also works for multiple strings in it, like in a one note at a time melody, for example. So watch this, here we go. So I don't know if you can see it, maybe I'll do this hand, it's probably easier to see. So I'm gonna play, you know, C, D, E, F, and you know, of course the, the rookie thing to do is to, you know, go in and at a right angle and to swat the string and pull it away and swat the string, pull it away. See what I'm doing? I'm just kind of, you know, doing that, you know, kind of, kind of whacking the string. <laughs> and what you what you really want to do is, if that was the word, I don't know, you know, door, for example, or harp. That's an even better word. H A R P. Well, what if every time you saw H A R P and you never realized that, that was a word that spelled the word harp? So it's a lot easier if you know what the word is, and then you can spell it out later as opposed to seeing H-A-R-P and saying, oh yeah, H-A-R-P, that's nice, okay, bye. And then, you know, not realizing that that spelled the word cat, right? So here we go. So you put your all your fingers on H-A-R-P and see, can you see me? Can you see? And so I'm literally, I have the whole word and now I'm gonna spell it out. This is a huge concept in harp. You have to think in multiple notes, just like a word that has many letters smushed together. So, and when I, when I actually play C, D, E, F, I actually pull each letter of the word off. So I'm now I'm gonna spell the word just by pulling my fingers off. So I place them. Now I'm going to black, ready? That's not a kind of patronizing, to me. sorry. So you go C, see that? No, that's the letter H. <laughs> We're in German, apparently. D, oh, that was a big old pluck, right? So you gotta be careful you don't do that. And uh, also, you know, there was a little bit of a string buzz on the finger that was above it. That was a little better. Ah, oh, and now watch what my thumb does. Boink, it goes down like that. Does that make sense? So let's do it again. And actually, I kind of like doing my right hand <laughs> better, but you can't see it. Anyway, uh, not nothing against the left. I don't know. I think maybe one hand may be a little better at it than the other. I do notice this too with my left hand. It's a slightly different angle than my right. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what's up with that. Maybe it's just because, you know, you're sitting with the harp in your right shoulder and you're hands are kind of wackadoo. Um, feel free to chime in and <laughs> correct any of this. I'm still learning too. So uh, the other thing too is notice you can also spell harp backwards. What would it be? Pra. So you go, here, get your harp word again and you're going to go P, which is your thumb, R, A, I can spell harp backwards, H, right? Okay. So let's just use letters. So if you put on C, D, E, F, which spells the word Kadef, it would be, or Sadef, C, D, E, F, and then if you spell it backwards, F-E-D-C, which is, f <laughs> don't ask me, F, 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 f I, don't, I don't know, what would it be, F, Fed, Fedka, so, or Fedsa, F, see my thumbs off, so these are on, now I only have two fingers on, now I have one finger, and now I'm done. So I'm off the harp. It compares a lot to knitting or crochet, where you usually generally have one loop on the needle or the hook at all times, uh, unless you're casting on or casting off. Um, Here's the deal that this, you can get this concept, I know this is kind of a lot for a you know, little tiny tip, but if you can notice I went in one direction, I placed and I pulled everybody off, and then I placed again, and I pulled everybody off, and I went either up or down. Uh, that's notated with brackets in your music, so they would write, you know, four, three, two, one, with a bracket over that sucker, doo, doo, doo. and then they'd go, they, you know, put another bracket with one, two, three, four, that I did. <clears throat> Sometimes you get a passage that goes up and down and there's the top note is shared. So for example, if I were a, you know, a beginner, and this is what I no doubt would have done, I would have hit the note, hit the note, hit the note, hit the note, and then right back 
notes down. So essentially, I'm, you know, uh, disjointing every single string. There is no word. Here's what's tricky. You ready? This is important. If you can get this, you're well on your way to harp them. Okay. <laughs> like, I know I'm still, I'm still getting there myself. But I did discover this is important. So look, if you've got your word place and you're going to go up, you ready? You're going to go C, D, E, and I'm going to go back down again. Now, instead of pulling my thumb off and placing it all on again, see what I did there, and going back down again, uh, notice I'm not going to hit the F twice. So here's what you don't want to do. You ready? Now, you can do it. I do, I do it plenty, but there's another way to do it. So watch. Here's what you can do. You place the word and you go up. Now, that F you hit once and everybody's off. Replace and just hit the bottom fingers. So essentially, you didn't really even need to replace your thumb. Here, try this. You ready? Okay, so you're going to actually leave your thumb on there and you're going to replace everybody else while the thumb is sitting there. So you're going to reverse directions with a little loop de loop at the top. Now, this was, this was a hard concept for me to get. Now I can do it sort of. So you go C. See, I have three fingers on. D, I have two fingers on. E, now my thumb is still there. Before I play the F, I'm going to replace those three fingers. Now I'm going to hit the F, and I'm going to go down. So in a way, if you want to think of it this way, is that F is only pulled off on the way down. Does that make sense? Um, I think, I don't want to overload you, but that would be something. Now, um, there's also something where you turn under, so watch this. I'm going to go, for example, when you're doing a scale, C, D, E, before I lift that F and I'm going to keep going G, A, B, C, I turn, look what I did here, I turn my four underneath, I've got my thumb still touching that F, and i got my four under here, see that, touching the next string up, and before I play the F, well, no, yeah, I have this fourth finger on that G, before I play the F. Now I'm going to play the F. Watch. Here we go. Bonk. And I'm immediately going to place the other three fingers going up. And then I play the G. G, A, B, C. So watch that again. It's just a way of doing a scale. And this is called turning under. So here we go. Ready? Under. Replay. Oh, well. String bust. <laughs> and A, B, C. Going down, you go you cross over. So it's the same thing. You place everybody first. One, two, three, four. C, B, A, G. Ready? I'm going to go down from the C. Remove all my fingers. Before I get rid of this G on my fourth finger, I'm going to touch the F with my thumb, and I'm going to play the G, and I'm going to swing my other fingers out, and I'm going to play, you know, F, E, D, C. So essentially you're going from this G, A, B, C placement to this C, D, E, F placement, and you either have a cross over, or you have a turn under, but you always place. So I think <laughs> I'm talking as much as the birdie's chirping. Do you hear him? They're saying, you're not doing it right. Do it over. <laughs> anyway, no, they're, they're loving all of my heart music. Can you tell? Listen, let's just listen for a minute. They're saying, place and look. <laughs> so I hope that helped. I know it helped me. I'm still working on it. Boy, those scales are tough. I'm still working on them. And then you got to do two, you know, two-handed scales like this. You go, bonk, 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 and they turn under. And then you go backward. Bonk, bonk, bonk. And you turn over. That idea. Um, oh, I do want to say one more thing before I hang up. Is this. Uh, the same applies not just to scales, but to chords. This is also really important. So, it, instead of going G, D, D, G. See what I did there? Put the whole shebang on there. I've got the G, I've got the B, I've got the D, I've got the G. Just get it on there, okay? And then pull it off one thing at a time. Bonk, 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 bonk. Same thing if I'm going down. Bonk, 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 bonk. I place everything on there and spell it out. Okay? If I'm going to go up and down without repeating that high G, here's what you do. You go, replace it. You go, up, bitty, up, bitty, up, bitty. And then before I go hit this G, I'm going to replace everybody. Down, bitty, down, bitty, down, bitty, down. Okay? So watch that again. Up, 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 replace. Down, 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 down. A new chord, C chord, for example. Up, 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 replace. Down, 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 down. And again, you can have, you know, just a three-note Charlie. You could have a, you know, a three-note octave with a fifth in the middle. Now, the last thing I'll say is sometimes you don't want to dampen the string, and so you don't uh, replace. Uh, for example, on the way down, listen to this. I want all that to resound. I want all that to sound. If I replace it going down, I just got rid of it. Do you hear that? 
So sometimes you don't want to do that. So again, there's no 100% right way to do something. Um, but anyway, those are some <laughs> handy, helpful hints. All right, hope that helped. And um, place, pluck, place, pluck. Same deal. Oh, I should tell you this too when you're doing arpeggios. Essentially what I'm doing is I am finding the whole GBD chord. I'm finding the GBD chord as a placement. I'm finding the GBD chord and I'm grabbing that G on the way down. I'm finding GBD and spelling it backwards. And I replace it. And I replace it. You can tell I'm a piano player. This is the same way you do it. And also in piano land, once one hand is done, you start moving it and placing it. So watch. Move it. Move it. Stay there. Move it. So be well ahead of playing it. I'm already moved down. Think of the alternative, which is what most people do in the beginning. And I have to teach my kids, oh, no, no, you have to do it like a flow like this. You don't wait till the last possible minute and then move your hand all of a sudden because guess what? You're probably going to miss it. <laughs> and that's the same applies to me. So thank you for listening. And um, ooh, the birds have stopped. Where did they go? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Talk to you later. Thank you. So here's two afterthoughts. <laughs> One of which is that when you have, remember I was telling you about, there's my hands, uh, you're going up, 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 and then you have that, you know, the top note, I'm playing the air harp right now. <laughs> uh, you don't hit the top note twice, and you go, you know, you go down, up, and down. That's indicated in your music with an overlapping bracket right at your thumb. So you'll see four, three, two, one bracketed. You'll also see one, two, three, four bracketed, and there's going to be an overlap over that one, your thumb. Uh, the other thing, too, is that if you notice, Again, it's that sort of needle work, you know, crochet hook type of concept where you usually have at least one, usually, loop on your hook. You're never completely off of the fabric that you're making. It's, it's the same idea on the harp in that you notice you're sort of kind of crawling around. You're kind of like a little spider kind of creeping off. The spider doesn't jump off the harp and come back on and jump off on. So, and then off and on again. So um, just kind of keep your hand close. I, I, uh, it's the same thing I was talking about um, with swatting, is that it's, it's, I see piano kids do this all the time, especially when I'm teaching staccato, where you play a short note. I actually teach um, staccato legato first so that they get everything placed and that they keep their fingers low to the keys. Um, staccato doesn't mean you go into the stratosphere with your hand, you know, and then come right back down. You always want to keep basically placed and just, you know, pull off the note. It's actually kind of a, a flick on the piano. Uh, that's not quite the right way to s describe it, but you are generally touching the note. And think of this too, if you're trying to create um, a line that has a crescendo or some kind of shape, um, you, uh, you know, it could be a timing shape, it could be a dynamic shape, uh, it could be some sort of articulation variety, who knows. But um, if you're constantly taking your hand on and off and not creeping around and crawling around the piano, keeping your fingers low and, you know, same applies harp. Uh, it's going to be a lot harder to create that overall flow from note to note because you're constantly disjoining it. Um, if your body is involved, on piano, you know, my entire body is involved. Um, those shapes are really easy to make if you allow your body to go through. Um, on harp, I noticed it's you know very similar. Every instrument's different. I remember when I first was learning viola, <laughs> and you cannot move. I mean, I suppose you can, but the body you can move on. Obviously, you see players flailing all over the place, but uh, the physical mechanism is very different, and where you're anchoring from your stomach, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, you can't like I was going at the viola like a piano player, which is slam bang and throw all your body weight and cut try to do that on a viola. Good luck. Um, you have to learn how to manage everything. But this, I do think the same sort of concepts apply. So anyway, hope that helped. <laughs> Those are my afterthoughts. And I'm going to, let's say, I'm going to say hi to the kitty. I say hi. Hi to kitty. No, he doesn't, he doesn't say hi. He's sleeping. All right, good night, y'all.